You know when you have to upload a photo to a website, but the file size of the image you want to use is too big? Here's how you fix that. Open the image in Preview. Click the Markup icon, and then click the Edit Size icon. You'll see that the image is currently 4.6 megabytes. Let's reduce it from 6,000 pixels to perhaps 2,000. Now it's less than one megabyte, which is probably enough. Hit OK. It's that easy. Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna go over 19 Mac tips to speed up your workflow and increase your productivity. Let's go. Need to sign a PDF? Super easy to do. Have the PDF open in preview, then click the markup button, then click the signature icon. Now, if you haven't done this before, you're gonna have three options. You can either draw it with a trackpad on your Mac, or you can use your Mac's camera to hold an actual written printed version of your signature in front of your Mac's camera and it will scan it. Or you can click iPhone or iPad and your nearby iPhone or iPad will become a touchpad for you to use for the signature. I'll use my Mac's trackpad. Click here to begin and I'll just kind of draw something, press any key when finished, tap done, and then I can just drag that into my document wherever I need it to go. And I can also make it bigger or smaller if I need to. Just make sure to hit Command S for save and you're done. If you often work with text documents, there are a couple of keyboard shortcuts that you should really know to navigate through the text faster and select text more easily. Here's how that works. I've got a document open and my cursor is right here. Now, if I use the right arrow key, I'm gonna traverse characters to the right. If I use the left arrow key, I'm gonna traverse characters to the left. But what if I hold the option key while I do this? You see, now I am moving by word. This is super convenient and I can go left as well, just holding option right, option left. But what if I hold option and shift at the same time? Now I can select words, more words or fewer words. Really, really handy. If I do option down arrow, I jump to the end of a line and to the end of the next line. If I do option up arrow, I go to the beginning of previous lines. So I can also select lots of lines this way by holding the option key, the shift key, and then the down arrow, I can select lines. Super handy, right? Now, while we're on the topic of editing text, you can replicate the Windows delete key functionality on the Mac. So on the Mac, my cursor is over here. If I use the Mac's delete key, it deletes to the left, right? Delete, 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 okay? So let me just undo that. But if I go to the beginning of a word and I hold the function key, which is at the bottom left of your Mac keyboard, and then press the delete key, I delete from the right. This is like the Windows delete key. So you have the option of using whichever one is most convenient for you. You might already know that on the Mac, if you long press a key, you can insert accents officially known as diacritics like this. Tomorrow in Spanish is mañana. I'm holding the letter N and now I can press one and that inserts an Ñ and I can say mañana. So this is very convenient if you write in other languages, but what if you write in other languages very often, or you want to write in a language where there are letters that don't appear on your keyboard? You can set up a second language on the keyboard and quickly switch between the two. To do that, go to System Preferences, then go to Keyboard, then input sources, and then you can click the plus sign here to add a language. I've already got a couple of languages added. For example, US, Dutch, which is pretty much the same, and Turkish, which is quite different. Now, if you check this box over here, show input menu and menu bar, you'll see at the top over here that my current language is set to the US. But if I use the Turkish version, then I can write the word yarın, which means tomorrow in Turkish. See, there's a letter I that doesn't have a dot. I wouldn't even be able to insert this with the American keyboard. Even if I long hold the I, it's just not there. So if you're often switching back and forth between languages, use multiple keyboard languages, and then you can easily switch between them. As a bonus, you'll also get the proper spell check and grammar for the other language. Oh, and if you want to insert emoji into a document or a chat or whatever, just hold the control and command keys and then press the space bar and this emoji picker will pop up. You can search or click for an emoji. For example, I can type clap and insert the clapping emoji. Nice, right? You can use multiple desktops on your Mac, officially known as spaces. To do this, let's open Mission Control, which you can do by using three fingers to swipe up or tapping the button that is also the F3 button on your keyboard. I'll swipe up with three fingers and then move the cursor up and I'll see all my full screen apps here and a desktop. Now, if I want to add a desktop, all I do is I go over to the right and I click the plus button here. Now I've got a new desktop. So I've got desktop one, and let's say I have a finder window here and desktop two, and I can create a different finder window here. Now these are not the same. See, this is one finder window and this is the other window. I can switch between the two using a three finger swipe to the right or a three finger swipe to the left, or I can use the control key and hit the control right arrow or the control left arrow. Now if I swipe back up with three fingers, 
in it. If, let's say I want to delete this second desktop, you just have to hover over it for a while and then you'll get the X over here. Now it's gone. You can also use this screen to combine two apps so you can see them at the same time. For example, I can take pages and drag it onto things. And now I'll have one screen here that has things on the left and pages on the right. And I can use this slider to show more of one app or more of the other. Now, if you're going to use spaces, you want to go to system preferences and go to mission control and just disable automatically rearrange spaces based on most recent use. Otherwise they'll constantly be shifting back and forth, which can be really irritating to keep track of. Now a quick tip for switching back and forth between different apps on your Mac is to use the keyboard shortcut command tab. I'm going to hold command and then press tab once. Now the switcher, the app switcher pops up and I can use the left arrow key or the right arrow key just to switch through. So let's say I wanna to go to Firefox and I can hit command and then tab again and then let go and it switches back to where I was. Or I can go to pages or I can go to notes. And again, if I just do command tab again, it goes back to the previous one that I was looking at. If you want to quickly close one window of an app or all of its windows without quitting the app, or if you want to quit the app, here's the keyboard shortcuts for that. With the window that you want to close open, just hit the keyboard shortcut Command W. Poof. This also works in your browser, by the way. Now, if you use Command Option W, all of the app's windows go away, but you see that the app here is still open. If I actually want to quit the app, you can also see that with the circle here. To actually quit the app, just go Command Q for quit. Poof. Gone. Now, if you've got an app that is crashing and you want to force quit it as quickly as possible, here are three ways to do that. First of all, you can find the app on your dock right click it and then hold the option key and you'll see quit changes to force quit. You can click it and it'll be gone right away. Or you can click the Apple logo at the top right over here, click force quit, select the app and then click force quit again. Or you can open the activity monitor. I'm gonna use spotlight to do this. So I'm gonna hit command space bar, open the activity monitor. Now this will list all of the processes that are open on your computer. So sometimes it takes a second to, show, to, to find them all. And then you can find the app that you wanna quit over here, Firefox, and you can press this button over here, force quit, and it's gone. Now here's a tip for those of you with messy desktops. If you go to your desktop and you right click and you choose use stacks, poof, all your documents will get sorted by type and be organized neatly. Now, if you right click again, you can choose group stacks by and you can say, I want them ordered by kind or by the date I added it to my desktop or last opened it, etc. Either way, you'll be much more organized. Unless you're one of those people who takes your Mac screen and you rotate it by 90 degrees from what it was designed to do, you're going to have more horizontal space on your screen than vertical space. So vertical space is at a premium. That's why I always recommend that people move their dock from the bottom to either the left or the right. So to do that, just right click this divider on your dock right here and then choose position on screen and move it to the left, for example. Now you can have more of that sweet, sweet vertical space, but you can go even further. You can right click again and you can say, turn hiding on and then your dock will go away unless you're mou mousing over it. And so you can actually use even more space. Of course, you can also just full screen apps, but you know, this is a good option. Did you know that the built-in spotlight search tool can do quite a few handy things? For example, if I bring it up by using the keyboard shortcut command space, I can convert currencies. I can say, what is 500 euros in US dollars? And it will tell me the actual live exchange rate, 536.94 dollars. You can also have it do math. So for example, sometimes I'm buying a new thing for my business and I wanna see what is the after VAT cost to me, 21% VAT in the Netherlands. So I'll do a little math like this. Then I think, hmm, it's a business expense. What is the after tax expense for me going to be after income tax, kind of do it like so, boom, quick maths, really handy. You can also find documents and open the enclosing folder, which is really nice. You probably knew that you can find documents, but let's say I'm looking for a document, but I don't want to open it. I just want to open the folder that it is in. I can choose the one I care about and then use the keyboard shortcut command R and open the containing folder. With a file or folder selected, just hit the space bar to preview the file or folder. This works on text documents, on images, and on PDFs, and many more types of documents. Now, once you have this quick look, as it's called, open, you can often mark it up, the file, or you can click the share button and send it somewhere, or you can open it with the default app that it opens with. By the way, if you want to change the default app that a certain type of file opens with, here's how you do that really handy if you need to remember that you're always getting these certain types of files that need you need to open with a specific app. Here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click a PDF document and choose get info. I like to use an app called PDF Expert for my 
PDFs rather than the built-in preview app. Although preview is also fine. I'll choose PDF expert and then I'm gonna click change all. This changes the default for PDFs to PDF expert. And now if I double click it or I use command O for open, it opens in PDF expert. Now, if you have a subscription to something like Netflix or to live sports and you can watch them on your Mac, you can often stream that to your TV as well, provided you have a relatively new TV. Here's how you do that. Click the Apple icon, then click system preferences. Under displays, choose add display. And if you have a modern TV, it will show up right here. I use this for example, to watch Formula One races because I have a subscription where I can watch it in the browser, but I wanna lay back on the couch and just enjoy it on my big screen in the living room. Need to send a file from one of your devices to another? No need to use email or some kind of transfer service. Just right click, choose share, and then airdrop. And if you've got one of your other devices nearby, such as your iPad, or if I tap my phone, my phone will also show up here. All you gotta do is just click and it will show up on your phone in no time. If you're often on the go with your Mac and you worry that it will run out of battery, you might like to know the exact percentage of battery that you have left, but it will not show that in the menu bar by default. Now you might think that if you click on this icon and go to battery preferences, the setting would be here, but it's not. Apple, what are you doing? So. Where do you find this setting? Just go to the main system preferences screen, then go to dock and menu bar, and then scroll down until you find battery. Here it is, show percentage, there we go. The Mac is a great built-in tool for taking screenshots or for recording your screen, which can be super handy if you need to show someone something on your computer. Here's how you pull it up. Just choose Command Shift 5, Command Shift 5 on your keyboard, and you'll see this little bar pop up right here. We can either capture the entire screen. If we select that and we do a click, you'll see that the screenshot at the bottom right has our whole screen. Or if I pull that back up, Command Shift 5, we can capture a selected window and then I can choose this window and click it. And now we'll have a screenshot of only that window. Let's pull it back up. I can also choose a portion of the screen, which I can just adjust like this. So I can only do a certain portion or I can record my entire screen. So it'll be a video or I can record a selected portion of the screen. Again, a video. Now, if I click on options, there's a bunch of things I can do. I can save it to a different place. I can start it on a timer. I can use a microphone so I can record myself speaking as well, which could be just the built-in microphone of the Mac or I can here choose show mouse clicks. That way if I'm recording a video and I'm clicking on stuff, those clicks will get highlighted. Like I said, it's really good. Need to create a PDF from one or more images? That's easy, just select them in the finder, right click, go quick actions and click create PDF. My images are a bit bigger, so it takes a second, but after a second, you'll see that PDF show up and I can just go ahead and open that with preview and you'll see that each page has one of the images. Now, what if you wanna do this the other way around? You have a PDF and you want to create images from it. Just right click one of the pages, go export as, change the format to a JPEG, choose where you want to save it, click save, and you'll see your image show up right there. If you just need to change the format of an image, for example, because you need to upload it to a website and you have a PNG, but it only accepts a JPEG, annoying. Here's how you do it, very simple. Just right click the image, then go to quick actions and click convert image. And you can choose the format. So here I'm choosing JPEG and I can keep it the same size if I want to, convert to JPEG and you'll see a duplicate show up, but it's a JPEG. Finally, did you know that in the finder, just like in your browser, you can use multiple tabs just have a finder window open and go file, new tab, or use the keyboard shortcut command T. You'll see I've got multiple tabs here and I can open a lot. This can be quite convenient if I want to quickly flick back and forth between different things. And then I can use the keyboard shortcut control, shift, and tab to go to the left and control tab to go to the right. So control tab cycles through them, control shift tab cycles back. If you enjoyed these Mac productivity tips, you might also enjoy my video with lots of tips specifically for Apple Notes. I'll put that on screen for you right now. Have a great day and see you in the next one. Ciao.